Hi, I'm Dave once again, TJ and the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet, and we are here in beautiful Shed, Oregon, at Teen Challenge, Pacific Northwest Center. And uh, here talking to Ron Winning, who is the Executive Director at Teen Challenge here in Shed. Ron, glad to have you with us on uh, Jesus TV. Good to be here. Thank you. You know, this is an amazing, uh, the, the feeling, the atmosphere at the center reminds me a lot of growing up at my grandparents' farm, grandparents' farm in Nyssa, Oregon. Very rural, very quiet. Does that help in, in the healing process for uh, the young men involved in Teen Challenge? I, I believe it does. If they come from a larger city, sometimes there's some adjustment because they, they like the noise, they like the hustle and the bustle. But once they get used to it, I think it is therapeutic. They get to get out and when the weather's nice, which it's been, therapeutic for them to walk the grounds. And So yeah, I think so. And then I like the country, so it's good for me too. Oh, it's nice out here. So Teen Challenge, exactly what is it? People have heard the name Teen Challenge, but a lot of people may not know exactly what it is. Okay, uh, it, Teen Challenge actually got started in 1958 with the ministry of David Wilkerson on the streets of New York City, working with uh, teenagers and gang members during that time. It blossomed into um, from the evangelistic outreach into a need to have people in a setting for um, residential. So Teen Challenge basically has evolved into basically we are a one-year concept. We provide recovery services for individuals that are mostly trapped with drugs and alcohol issues. And so it's a faith-based program. And they come here for a year, and if they get in trouble, sometimes a little longer, but it's one year. And I think that's why the program works, because it's one year for them to really take a close look at their life. One of the things that's always impressed me about the Teen Challenge program is the recidivism or the repeat offender rate. When you look at the the very positive numbers from Teen Challenge compared to secular programs, you guys just blow them out of the water. Uh, and obviously we love it when, when um, young people are recovered from alcohol or drug addiction, no matter how they do it. Obviously we want them to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But the repeat, let's call it the success rate. The success rate for Teen Challenge is like 85% as opposed to 20 percent I think in some secular programs is mm -hmm. that correct? Uh, it, that might <clears throat> be a little high but yeah. that number is based on individuals who actually graduate the program uh, not all of them do of course graduate right. but but yeah I would probably put uh, somewhere around 70 percent and I don't think I'd put secular programs quite that high but as 20. So you there's something going on that's right here, and I believe it's God. Exactly. We provide the atmosphere, we provide the facility, but it's the God factor that makes the individuals change. Uh, it's what uh, changes them from the inside. Um, a lot of our classwork or counseling is helping them to basically identify wrong thinking, which we call stinking thinking, which basically doesn't line up the way with God and how he's created us to be and live. And so it's addressing those issues, and you've got a year to do that. Now, you've acquired an old school out here. It's a really nice facility. It's an older yeah. school that's been remodeled, but in very, very good shape. Uh, how many uh, male adults do you house out here? We have a 50-bed facility, and then we have room for four individuals or staff members to live on site as well. And they live out here. The 30 students live out here. The 50? Uh, well, actually, yes, they do. They're, they're supervised 24 hours a day. They'll either be on work projects uh, in like our thrift stores or here in the evenings, but they're supervised 24-7. So what happens out here? Is it classroom instruction? Is it counseling, both and more? What exactly do you do? Well, there's a lot of aspects to it. Um, the individuals, uh, there's classes that uh, they, they do. There's National Teen Challenge curriculum that they go through that's developed for them. And so that's based on basically helping them to identify their thinking areas and how God created them. We also provide one-on-one -on -one counseling with counselors. We do also a vocational training, which takes place uh, probably predominantly in our thrift stores. It's a very full schedule. Um, then when they get back in the evening, there's usually some event or something that they do in the evening too as well. So, How long have you been associated with Teen Challenge? I've been here 20, almost 22 years. What do you like about the program? 
what I like about the program is um, I'd like to be a part of seeing the light bulb go on in the eyes of individuals when they begin to see uh, how God has designed them to live and set them free and that they don't have to be addicted or in bondage anymore. And it's that's the fun part for me is just being a small part of that. Do you deal with anger issues? Do you deal with issues other than substance abuse, alcohol, and drugs? Anger is also a great part of it. Uh, as we uh, we have here uh, a pretty um, secure building. It's concrete walls and tiles, so um, not too many holes in the wall. But when we were in the other facility, guys would punch uh, walls and things like that. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of anger issues because... Their life's not working, and they're angry, and they're hurt, and they're beat up, and they get here. And, and so, yeah, that's a lot of that. A lot of stressors out there. As we talk to people, they're really concerned about the future of the country, future of the economy. Um, the unemployment rate's high. There's a lot of uncertainty about the future. Um, are you seeing the need for uh, more programs like Teen Challenge? And are you seeing the number and the severity of issues coming to you increase? Of course, uh, the national um, arm of the government uh, that does these studies, the light, latest one said now we have 20 million Americans that are addicted to a, a substance. That's 20 million people. Um, obviously, um, Teen Challenge doesn't have 20 million beds in the United States, so the, the need is great, and uh, it is growing. It used to be, last survey they did before that, it was 18 million, so it's blossomed to 20 million now, that they say, and of course their studies are about a year and a, or two years behind what it would be today, so it takes them a while to catch up. So, How do they get plugged into a Teen Challenge program? A lot of different ways. Uh, pastors or churches that know about us, if, Referral. We have uh, family members, sometimes grandma, grandpa, uh, know about Teen Challenge and or mom and dad. Um, they hear it on the radio. They hear it uh, maybe stop it in our thrift store. Uh, we also have outreach teams that go out. We've, um, we've had some guys come in right off the street in Eugene. Uh, where we had some staff members and went down and, and talked to them about Teen Challenge and brought them into the program. So a lot of different varied ways. One of the things that I like about Teen Challenge is you talk to some, some of the young men that have graduated from the program. Uh, invariably, they say, this changed my life. Uh, and they, they talk, one of the things I like about Teen Challenge is they speak favorably about the, pro about the program, but they speak a lot about God, about Jesus, about mm -hmm. their relationship. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I like about the Teen Challenge program that I'm seeing is you're teaching them about God right. and how to have a relationship with God. That's right. key, isn't right. it? Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all of it uh, because they are not going to be able to live here forever. Mm -hmm. So it's teaching them uh, how to live out there as well, to be productive members of society, to, to handle stressors of life. And we, God knows we are in an environment right now that is very stressful. Very and time. so learning how to deal with that stress in, in the way that God's designed it with his power, and that's a lot of what we do, and I think that's why it's successful as well. If you go look into that camera, and let's say we're talking to a young man that's hooked on crack or cocaine or heroin, and, and is thinking about ending his life, and just think that, you know, there's no way out. It's just all downhill from here, and just gets blacker and blacker. What would you say to that young man to turn him around and have him choose Jesus Christ, or get plugged into a Teen Challenge program? Well, I would basically say to that individual that there is hope, that uh, the, the, what's going on in your heart right now in, in a sense of hopelessness is, is not the way God designed you to live, that there is a better way to live, and that uh, Teen Challenge is there for you to help you find that hope in living a, a life that you really want. And so I would say pick up a phone, dial a number, um, contact the Teen Challenge Center because they would love to help you and because God's got a wonderful plan for your life. You know, God bless you and thank you for all you do for Teen Challenge. Thank you for having us. Hey, we have a chance to talk to a student who's been here at Teen Challenge at the SHED program for about six months now. Gary Lute is his name. And Gary, thank you for talking to us on TJN, the Jesus Network. 
and sharing about your testimony and what Team Challenge has done for you. Why were you in the program? Was it, I guess it was alcohol addiction. It was alcohol. I've um, been uh, an alcoholic for over 35 years of my life, and uh, I am 50 years old. So I was around 12 years old, I started drinking, and uh, it just progressively got worse as I uh, grew up, you know, in high school it got really bad. Well, probably my 11th, 11th grade year, it got so out of hand where I was falling behind on school and, you know, and being disrespectful to my parents. And, you know, and I, my parents were never drinkers or anything like that, you know. And so it was just, uh, and it got worse even as I got married to my first wife, and I was married for over 14 years to her. And I uh, had three wonderful boys. Did you find peaks and valleys where sometimes it was really strong and then you were trying to kick it and you would go up and down on this yo-yo? Yes, it was. Um, you know, there was a period of my marriage life that I moved away for probably about 10, 11 years out of the Salem, Oregon area. I moved up to Washington and I didn't really touch any alcohol. And, uh, and then came back to Oregon and got involved in a, a restaurant bar business and things just really went downhill from that point on and it just progressively got worse where I got into the hard liquor and uh, where I was just slowly uh, killing myself you know I mean I was told diagnosed that my liver uh, enzymes was very highly elevated that I needed to quit and I thought I could kind of slow down and quit a little bit but it just it never actually went away. What was the bottom for you? What did it take for you to realize that you needed help, that you needed something like God or something like a Teen Challenge program? Well, after um, I destroyed my first marriage, um, 12 years later I remarried my second wife. And uh, within those three years I wasn't working. I was hiding my alcohol, drinking and drinking and drinking and hiding it from her. And within three years, she basically, you know, left me. And, you know, it was probably about five months after that point where I seen one of my best friends dying from cirrhosis of the liver from his alcohol usage. And I was like looking in a mirror. I seen myself there. I said, that's me within two months, six months, a year, I don't know how long it would be. And I knew about Teen Challenge probably about two, three years prior to that. But um, it, was, it wasn't something that I thought that I needed. I really thought that I could do it by myself. And, uh, you know, it was like God really spoke to me one day after I seen my friend and I was losing my wife because I was lying to her even more. I was telling her that I wasn't drinking even though we wasn't together but we were still seeing each other and trying to make the marriage work. But I was lying to her continuously saying, oh, I'm not drinking, I'm doing very well in my life and everything's doing really good. But after seeing my friend and then realizing what I was actually doing to myself because my health was just diminishing badly. I mean, my diabetes was out of control, blood pressure was out of control, and my weight was out of control. Everything was, it was, I was losing it all, you know, and so I decided that I needed a change. You and said something that's kind of interesting to me, and the reason why I bring this up is people on the street sometimes say, I've heard God speak to people, and I wonder how he talks to them. You use the phrase, God spoke to you. How did God reach through you know, this thing years and years, decades, you've been trying to throw the, the, break this habit and have been able to do it. What was it, how did God speak to you? I think um, from what I can gather is, he basically just said that I need to change my life right away. And it was, I don't know, I think it was more of a dream that I had, but I just, I remember waking up that next morning and and I remember checking my blood sugar level. My blood sugar level was 550, which was very, very high. And I knew that I had to change. And so that's when I immediately contacted Teen Challenge that same exact day and started to get the things rolling so I can get in here right away. What is it about Teen Challenge that attracted you? Well, um, the one biggest thing that really uh, attracted me to this program was being that it's a Christian background. 
you know, I accepted Christ in 2006, but I really never had that total walk with, with the Lord. And I wanted that so much. And if I could just come away from just having that walk from here, then I got everything that I really wanted from this program. What is it about this program that really solidified your relationship with Jesus Christ? You wanted to walk with the Lord, and has this program been successful for you, and how has that worked for you? Yes, it has. Um, the Lord, um, since I've been in this program, I entered this program March 19th of this year, and since I've been in this program, my faith has grown in the six months more than it ever did in six years of my entire life. Um, I've, uh, for the Lord coming into my life now, I mean, that's all I ever turn to for anything. You know, my, my deep prayers every morning, I, I, I have my prayer time alone, then we also have group prayers through here. But, you know, they not only do they help you with your alcohol or any type of addictions that you may have, but they're instilling the Lord in you and teaching you how the Lord really acts, wants you to live in life. And, you know, it is so incredible the things that I have conquered since being in here by rebuilding my relationship with my wife, by, by no longer taking any medications for my diabetes or my high blood pressure because of living the way the Lord wants me to actually live, you know. Is it classroom instruction? Is it counseling? Is it it's it's counseling? all of that. It's it's the it's the counseling. It's the classroom instruction. It's it's the way the staff help out all the students, you know. And I mean, I highly recommend this program for every individual that's struggling with any type of a habit of anything, you know. Let's say there's a, a young man or an older man that's watching this video right now. Go ahead and look into that camera and just pretend that you're talking to somebody that is really struggling with the situation where you were. Maybe their friend has just died or dying of cirrhosis of the liver or drug addiction or heroin overdose, for example. There's some of that going on. Um, and they, they, they don't want to die. But they know that if they don't do something, that they probably will. What would you tell that person? I would tell I would urge you to do everything possible to contact any teen challenge that is out there to make every effort to get involved within teen challenge and it is a living proof that it does work i mean it's it's worked in so many other people's lives and I, I know it's working in my life you know my friend died while i was in this program with uh, about 2 weeks of after enrolling in this program so this program will work for you, will work for anybody out there that is in need of Christ, in need of to get rid of your addictions. Your, and I highly recommend this program to anybody. I mean, this program does save lives. It's not an easy program, but you really have to put yourself through this program and do it. And, and one of the things that I am learning is just don't let the program go through you. You go through the program and utilize this program. And it's well worth it. Okay, well, God bless you. Thank right, you for thank sharing you. your testimony. And it's, you and it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see God change people's lives and to take somebody from a path that where they're going to destruction and death unto new life. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ uh, becoming alive in us and about there being new life through a relationship in Jesus Christ. You've experienced that, haven't you? Yes, I have. Okay. Yes. Well, God bless you. Thank you for your story. Thank you, and God bless you. And we're continuing out here at this beautiful facility, uh, Teen Challenge in Shed, Oregon. We're talking to Kevin Tomaszewski. And Kevin, how long have you been in the Teen Challenge program? I've been in the program now for approximately six months. And what has the program done for you? Well, since I've been here, um, I've started to learn. Uh, I started to learn proper Christian ethics. Um, I accepted Christ a while back, probably about nine years ago, and uh, I was involved. I was an, a member in a church, um, <clears throat> but I still struggled with a lot of things, and. Uh, 
I was committed. I I read my Bible. I prayed and uh, did what I thought was good Christian living, but really, uh, it wasn't. Uh, I could avoid all kinds of things, and, and I struggled back and forth with um, some addictions. So since I've been here, um, with the courses that have been set up and that they've been uh, given to me, and uh, the fashion that they've been given to me in, uh, I've learned how to uh, um, figure out some of the. I've learned how to figure out where some of my problems were and how I went wrong. What kind of addictions were you struggling with, if you don't mind me asking? Um, everything. The last one was heroin, though. Okay. But every, off and on 19 years of my life. Pretty tough to shake, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Could you have shaken it without God in your life? No. You mentioned that, it's kind of interesting to me, you mentioned that you had a, a faith, you went to church, you, you did the church thing, but that wasn't enough. What is it that's happened out here that's really made your walk with Jesus Christ much deeper and life-changing, in fact? What's the difference out here? The difference, the difference out here is that you're... The difference out here is that when you're committed to this program, you you don't have an escape route. You know, for an addict or, or for anybody with any life controlling problem, whatever it is, food, whatever, you, you always can go back to that. You can go to church and you can leave. You know, you can uh There's always the door. There's always the door. Here you're forced to deal with things head on with God. You're forced to see who you are, you're forced with so many different men to actually see how you resolve conflict you know see what's really inside of you see how you work with others how you handle um, being treated unfairly or how you see injustice uh, uh, all along those lines does it help to be around men that are struggling with the same kind of issue where you can relate to them yes mm -hmm. draw strength from that encouragement advice yeah okay what's ahead in your future well, ahead in my future, uh, I'm going to get everything restored to what it was before uh, the heroin addiction. Uh, I, get, I have a trade in construction, and uh, my plans for after I graduate here is get right back on that and uh, work. And uh, I want to raise a family and uh, be active in a church and uh, contribute to the community <laughs> in a good way. Okay. You're smiling. Did you smile any before? Yeah, but not good smiles. <laughs> not a good smile. Uh, there was something behind the smile before. And now, yeah. Now what's behind the smile? Well, Christ in my life and, and actually, uh, you know, doing what it is that he asked me to do. Mm -hmm. you know. What would you say to people that maybe watching our interview might be snickering and saying, oh, there's just that Jesus thing or just that religion? We often hear in churches, and I've preached a lot too, is um, there's a difference between religion and having a relationship with God. So, what would you say to somebody who might be watching this interview and thinks we're talking about religion, and what we're actually talking about is knowing God? How would you explain it? Let me think about it real quick. See, that everybody's got to find their purpose in something, okay? And what I believe it is, and, and what I'm created for, is for eternity. So, what that does for me is gives me an aim forever, no matter what goes on here. People put their aim in other things, end up in addictions, end up in broken relationships, end up all over the map with things. When you have something concrete and you have, you have a direction and how I envision it, my relationship with Christ, <clears throat> you know, I have, I know what's right and wrong because that's what Christ said is right and wrong. And then, it's evident in my life that it works because I put it into practice. You know. So. Does having a relationship with God give you the strength to overcome the heroin addiction and then to stay off it? You know, I, I had this conversation. It's like um, when I gave it when I gave it up to God and really just decided that I couldn't do it no more and that I needed His help. Kind of went away. You know, it went away. You know, and like when I was here, it 
the the temptation of it didn't last that long. You know, just even the thoughts of it and everything, and that's how it worked for me. Kevin, one of the things that we're asking everybody to do, let's say we're what, looking into the camera, somebody watching this interview and they're going through the same things. Let me ask this question first. If it hadn't been for Teen Challenge, hadn't been for a, a strong relationship with God, where would you be today? Well, I'd be dead. I, I overdosed from heroin. I almost lost my hand from heroin. Um, I, I, I'd be dead. I'd be dead. I would never had a chance to... I never would have an opportunity to come to a place where I could actually not have so much temptation thrown out and kind of really see what's going on in my life and deal with it with God. I would have been dead. Let's say somebody's watching this interview now. We're asking this question to everybody we're talking to today. Somebody's watching. They're going through the same struggles you were, and they're, they're seeing a very deep, dark hole that probably ends in death. They don't think there's any other way out. What would you say to them to tell them that a relationship with Jesus Christ will change their lives? Can you ask me one more time? <laughs> sure. How would you phrase it to them? What would you say to them? Let's say I'm walking up to you on the street, and let's say I'm strung out on heroin. And I'd say, man, I, I'm just, I think I'm just going to be dead next week. You know, what, 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 what was it? Nothing used to live. There's no reason to live. It's just, you know, one high to another, and then there's a crash, and you know, I've never been addicted to heroin, so I don't know. But um, they just don't see any hope. And so I'm coming up to you on the street and saying, man, you know, I think I'm going to be dead next week. There's just no way out. What would you say to me? I'd say the first thing, you need to accept Jesus Christ, you know, or pray about it. You know, that's that's how it works for me. And the next thing is get in a place like this where you can be discipled. Because, you know, the truth of the matter, Christian or not, to be in your environment as a drug addict is hard. You know, that's just, it is what it is. And uh, along the lines, two of those people, you know, I was on every type of pill there was to get off heroin. I was box and methadone. I went to, through every psychiatrist, was told that... Uh, I was bipolar, schizophrenic, that I'd never be able to hold a job, have a relationship, um, had impulse control disorder, stuff all through my life, and it was all untrue, you know. So, with learning how to live for Christ um, and uh, digging in, it works. God healed you from that. Yeah. Kevin, God bless you. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Once again, we're at Teen Challenge, and we're talking to Roddy Erickson. Roddy, thanks for talking to us today. We've talked to you before about Teen Challenge. Yeah, yeah, you did. How long have you been involved in the program? Um, five, going on six months now. Okay, what's it done for you? You know, like I said before, that uh, <clears throat> God uses Teen Challenge as a vessel to speak uh, to the men, and particularly me. He's showing me that... Uh, through the program that life's not all about me and I'm having to learn little bits by little bits that um, it's not just my family and their opinions that matter um, it's even the people that I don't so much get along with their opinions and uh, what matters to them should also matter to me and that's what God's been teaching me while I've been here is it the classroom instruction, the counseling, living with guys that are going through the same kind of struggles, all the above? I, I'm going to say all the above, and let's throw in a little uh, life experience. Because when we get to go out into the community and we get to work and um, interact with other people, we get to apply what we learn here. You know, we get to apply the biblical principles to life. I mean, knowledge without understanding is, is useless. So we get our knowledge here, and then we get to apply it in relation to people out there, in relation to work, in relation to living in uh, confined quarters with men that you don't normally get along with. So, all the above. One of the things that's always impressed me about the Teen Challenge program is the success rate is exceptionally high when you compare it to other programs. I've heard figures 70%, sometimes as high as 80%, depending on the program. And secular programs, 15 12%. You know, it's light years beyond what typical programs are in dealing with people that are dealing with the drug and alcohol abuse. Why is that? What do you think? Well, 
I'm one of them guys. I've been in um, I've been in a lot of secular programs, drug and alcohol programs, and <clears throat> I can tell you right now that uh, the big difference is love. A lot of those programs don't teach you about your self worth and your identity. They just want to say this is your problem. And uh, I'm not going to knock on the programs because they help a lot of people. But sure. but for me, uh, what has helped me um, is knowing who I am in Jesus Christ. And I'm a valued child of God. And if I can internalize that, and it's set in me, and I walk in that, I'm a changed person. I don't have to look at look behind me all the time and, and be afraid that my addiction is going to catch up with me because I'm a new person. And as long as I accept I'm a new person and that God truly loves me, I believe that rubs off and I'm going to be able to love others. You know, the Bible talks about being transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. Uh, one of the things I like about Scripture, and I've had this in my own life, is you go through things in your life and you've read that Scripture for years and years and years and years, and maybe even preached it, but then you come to a situation in your life where that Scripture comes alive. And being transformed into the image of Christ is is something you know that God's put on my heart when I'm hearing your story. Yeah, it's, that's absolutely true. I'm glad you hear that because that's what I was trying to convey. Is is that is applying the truth of God to life. Things just come alive when you actually apply yourself to God's word. You know, He says, "Don't don't be a hearer only; be a doer. Don't be deceived." Do not be deceived. You actually have to do your part. There's a lot of scripture uh, in there, and a lot you know that tells us how to do things. But there's always the if. Got to pay attention to the if. I mean, there's things that we have to do on our part. I mean, it tells us be self-controlled. Do this. Do that. It doesn't mean we do it in and of our own strength, but we do it in the strength of Jesus Christ. And what would you say to somebody who, who might be a drug addict, uh, hooked on alcohol? Every once in a while, he says, I'm going to try out this God thing. And he walks into a church, sits in the back row, listens to some of the sermon, and goes, ah, this isn't for me, and walks out. There's a huge difference between just kind of dabbling your foot in the water, thinking of it as religion, versus really thinking about it as a relationship with God. How would you describe that? Let's say you're talking to the, let's say I'm just walking to the back row of a church. And let's say, oh, I've tried out this God thing, and they're just a bunch of preachers, and they don't know what they're talking about. You know, they don't know what it's like, life likes on the street. And you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. What would you say to me? Well, <clears throat> interesting you would ask that, because guys come into the program here, that's very similar. Mm -hmm. And the first question I ask them is, are you aware of how much you just bit off? Because this is not a normal program. And so what I tell them when they say, no, I didn't really know that much about the program when I got here, I tell them, well, if nothing else has worked and you're sick and tired of the way it's been, give yourself a chance. And in that, I pray that you learn to have a relationship with Jesus. Because you really ultimately have to give yourself a chance in order to be open. You have to be open to receive Jesus. It's got to start somewhere. There's got to be this opening of your heart. You have to give, we call it giving your heart to the Lord, but essentially what that means is allowing Him to come into you, accepting Him. Right. Or accepting the fact that He can change your life and not just shutting Him out, not just stiff arming Him. Right. A lot of guys do that. Mm hmm. And I, you know, and I got to add another thing that I, I believe is, is, uh, is very important. A lot of times, drug and alcohol use and living that lifestyle, your whole entire mind is negative. Your outlook on everything is negative. Something's always going to fail. Something's always going to go wrong. That's the mindset you have. At least I have, and so have many uh, acquaintances that I've been around. And if you can just try your hardest. I mean, if there's one area that you're going to try to push away that's going to benefit you in recovery, in a new relationship, is push that old negative thinking aside 
And again, give yourself a chance so that God can work in you. Roddy, God bless you for your program and for your testimony about this program and being a model for other guys and showing them there's a way. I don't know that I'm a model, but I just try to do the will of God. I try my best. It's not easy, but uh, it, it's, it's worth it. You know one thing? Uh, you've seen the movie Faith Like Potatoes. Have you seen that movie? Uh, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I haven't. Okay. Uh, it's got a, about a guy by the name of Angus Buchan. Okay. One of the things that he s says in, I think, the documentary about the movie is an evangelist is just one hungry man telling another hungry man where to go to find bread. Amen. Amen. That's, that's what it is. That's so, good. God bless you. All right. God bless you and thank you. And we continue here at Teen Challenge in Shed, Oregon, and we were talking to David Mosley, who is an intern with the Teen Challenge program. David, I understand you want to go to India. That's correct. Teen Challenge International, we have Teen Challenge centers in now 93 countries worldwide, including India. After I complete my one-year internship, I'm going to go to our Georgia center where they train for Teen Challenge International and then go work in Teen Challenge in India. Now let's talk about your story for a little bit. How did you initially get involved in Teen Challenge? Did you have a drug and alcohol issue that I had to deal with? I did. Um, I was actually saved when over 10 years ago in 2001, and after about eight years, I relapsed and went back into drug use after a bout with cancer. And I tried a secular program, which worked for about two months, and I went back out and started using again. I knew I needed to get my life focused back on God and having been brought up in the assemblies I knew about Teen Challenge I said I need to come somewhere where God is the deciding factor in the prominent So you tried the secular programs and you tried the Teen Challenge or the God program where there's Jesus Christ involved what's the difference? Jesus Christ that much of a difference? That is the difference you know um, the secular programs they talk about a higher power if you don't know what that higher power is there's no power. Where would you be if it hadn't been God really getting into your life and you really opening up and having a relationship with Him? I'd be dead by now, or in jail. I was headed down a wrong path and I was going downhill pretty fast. If you don't mind me asking, what kind of drugs were you involved in? And the reason why I'm asking that is so if people that are watching mm -hmm. have the same kind of addiction that they know there's hope for them. Oh, methamphetamines was my drug of choice. Okay. Why India? Now you've been involved in the Teen, teen Challenge program. A lot of the guys will, will come into Teen Challenge, they'll get set free, change their life, and they'll go off and have a happy life. You want to go and you want to help others. I, I definitely want to go and help others and there's, um, you know, the Great Commission is all the world. Some people can stay right in their community and help. Um, I've always knew, known that missions was something God was calling me to and uh, God has put a burden on my heart for India and so um, since Teen Challenge has a presence in India it seemed like a natural fit. What do you like, so you're seeing the program from both sides, you're seeing it as somebody who got help and as somebody who's giving help now. Um, in your perspective seeing it from both sides, what is it that you really like about the Teen Challenge program? <laughs> there's quite, quite a few things. There's quite a few things. Um, I like the fact that it is a faith-based program. You know, we describe ourselves as, you know, a faith-based recovery program for drug and alcohol, but really we're a discipleship program. The um, overcoming addictions is almost a side effect. We're here to teach people about God and how to get to know Jesus Christ. And when they get to know Jesus, there's no room for drugs and alcohol. Praise God. Amen. We've asked everybody to do this, so we're going to ask you, David. Let's say somebody's watching the show, struggling with meth, uh, heroin. You know, there's some pretty nasty drugs out there. Uh, addiction rate on some of those drugs is pretty high. Mm -hmm. They're struggling with that. They don't believe that there is any hope for them other than death to set them free. You're here to tell them that there's something else other than death to set them free. Look into that camera and talk to the folks and Let's say there's a young man out there that's thinking of taking his life tonight. Well, you tell if him? you can hear my voice right now, I, I just want to pray for you and just ask, Father God, Lord, if there's someone out there who's hurting, who's struggling, if you're dealing with addictions, 
Yeah. Lord, just touch them right now. Know that there is hope. That God wants to touch you. He wants to help you. He wants to free you. There are ways. Death is not the answer. It's not the way out. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call. God, just touch them right now. I just ask that you would move their hearts and stir, stir their soul. Just reach out and touch them. You know, we are here for you wherever you are. There are Teen Challenge Centers, and there are churches, and there are people that love you and want to help you and show you the better way. So, Father, I just ask you to touch them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. David, thank you for that prayer. My pleasure. God bless you, and thank you for what you're doing in Teen Challenge. And God bless you, and hope you do amazing things with the help of God in India. Thank you. The Jesus Network, TJN, we're here at uh, Teen Challenge in Shed, Oregon. What we want to do as a network, what we want to do on the Internet, and through the various outreaches that we're involved with, is to find out what God is doing and report it. There are some amazing things. You've heard testimonies today of men that, and they all agree that they would all be dead if it hadn't been for God changing their lives. God is doing some amazing things on this planet today. And we've committed ourselves as a network to go out and find those stories, to find those testimonies and share them. Because there is strength, there is power in the testimony. Because if you see God working strongly in some person's life, and you have somebody sitting here saying that I would be dead if it wasn't for Jesus Christ changing my life. If you have a story about how God's changed your life, I would like to hear about it and we'd like to do a story with you. You can email me at dave at tjn, the number one, dot tv. Dave at tjn1, dot tv. The one simply stands for, we all serve one God, and He's Jesus Christ. We are here to work with ministries, denominations, churches that proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This is a non-denominational outreach, and we are here to work with and report stories on, for any ministry or church that calls Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm Dave Adams, TJN, the Jesus Network. It is time right now to change this planet.